Well, hey there, fabulous authors. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wanted to jump on because yesterday we posted one of our tutorial videos all about your author bio photo. And we went through th uh, three really important things that you need to know when it comes to picking out your author bio photo. We talked about proper lighting, we talked about proper posing and not looking dated, we talked about making things look really modern, and we talked about having that high quality image even if you're not using a professional. And we talked a little bit about how to get a professional look even if you aren't hiring a professional. So if you have not seen that video, go check that out. That's over on our resource blog and the link will be up in the title. And if you're watching our rebroadcast, if you're not here live with me or on my Facebook page, you can check the show notes below for that link. Now, I wanted to talk to you today about something we need to know after you've already picked out your perfect author bio photo. Because the things that you need to know do not end with picking out that really good, high quality caliber photo for your author biopic. In fact, that is only the beginning. So I wanna to talk to you real quick about what you need to know after you've picked out the perfect photo. So let's think about this. You've taken your photo, you've picked the perfect one, you're happy with it, it's going to be perfection. What do you do with it now? Who is going to be seeing this photo? Where are you sending it? What are you doing with it? Where is it being used? Well, you're definitely gonna put it on your website. You're gonna put it on your social media. It's probably gonna be your profile picture. Actually, it should be your profile picture. Um, and, and you are going to be sending this to book bloggers and to booktubers. You're going to be sending this to places where you are guest posting on blogs and on different shows. You come on any of my shows, I need your photos. So you're gonna be sending this to a lot of people. And that is where this video comes in because I see frequently a lot of problems with the photos that people send me. Now, we addressed a lot of those in the other video on the quality of your photo and what photo you're picking, but I'm talking about the file itself. You see, I get sent a ton of photos without proper labeling. You need to make sure that you are properly labeling your photos so that whoever you are sending it to knows who you are, knows what this photo is, what it's for, and if you just send image number 0725, if I put it on my external hard drive and then I go to look for it because I'm going to be using it and I can't find it, that's a problem. And if I have a file that I see but I'm not really sure who you are or I don't know your face very well, I'm not gonna know who that photo is. So you need to make sure that you are labeling your photo properly. So once you get it back from your professional photographer, or once you get it from the person who took your photo, or once you take it off of your camera, it's okay to leave your file number there for yourself, but you need to make a copy of it and then rename it. And you need to have your author name. And I actually recommend having your author name followed by uh, author bio photo or something like that, so that we know what it is and what it's for. So for me, I label my photo K.M. Robinson author bio photo or I just put my name K.M. Robinson so that people know who I am and what this photo is because chances are not everybody knows me really really well and they would not be able to identify my face just by seeing it or they might put it on their computer and then when they go to find it later they may not remember that it was image number 0721 it's gonna be a problem. But if I put my name there and they go to their search tab and they type in my name, voila, there it is. So we gotta remember, going back to that first video, quality is so important and the file that you send me is so important and labeling that is so important because as someone who is using your photos, I need to be able to find you. Most people, when they send me photos, do not have them properly labeled. And I go in and fix it myself. But a lot of people don't think of that in advance, and they only realize that it's a problem when they go to search for it later and they cannot find you. So labeling your file is imperative to your success as an author because then people will be able to find you, they'll be able to use your photo, and they'll be able to get you out there and market you better when you help them like this. Now the other thing is the file size. I want to talk real quick about that. You do not want to send a super low res image, but you also don't want to be sending people a super high res image. You do not need that to be sent out to people to use on the internet. So send a web size resolution, something that is not too big, but not too small, that easily gets mailed out and can easily be viewed on the internet. Now, I'm not going to give you a ton of specifics. I typically like to see photos being emailed to me about one megabyte in size, so if that helps you, 
Um, that's a pretty decent size for the web, but I know a lot of this is really technical. I'm not going to get into that because you guys don't have a lot of the editing programs that you need to kind of change things up. So if you're getting it from a professional, make sure you ask for a web size file. And if you're doing it yourself, just kind of make sure it's not super high res or super low res, because if it's really low res, it's going to be all pixelated and it's not going to look good. And if it's super high res, that's going to be a huge file, and that actually might be a little weird looking if you're putting it on a web size thing. So if we have a ton of information that we're squishing down into this web sized image, that might end up looking a little bit off when you see it on the internet. So you want that web sized file to send, plus it's easy to send through the email or through Facebook or through Dropbox or whatever it is you're doing. So make sure you have a web size file and make sure it is labeled with your name. Okay, I am doing the finger thing because I want you to label it with your name. If you don't, I'm not going to know who you are. If I forget to fix your labeling, I really can't guarantee I'm going to be able to use your photo in the future. So you need to take care of that yourself. You are responsible for your author brand. You are responsible for getting your things labeled properly and then getting them to the proper people. So whoever needs it, your web designer, your social media marketer, um, your publisher, anybody doing PR for you, any bloggers, any booktubers, anybody that you're guest posting for, you are the one responsible for getting that photo to them and labeling it properly. So make sure you check out that video on author bio photos if you have not done so yet. Up in the title if you were with me live or on my Facebook page, down in the show notes below if you are with our rebroadcast. And if you have questions, let me know, drop them below. Later this week and into next week, I'm going to be doing some live broadcasts where we're going to be talking specifically about working on your author photos. We're going to be talking about lighting and composition and how to create those really gorgeous photos, whether or not you're working with a professional. If you are working with a professional, let them go. They know what they're doing. Just make sure they're a legit professional, not just somebody who picked up a camera and said, I'm going to start charging people. You want them to have training. Any decent professional has ongoing training. I am one of those people that does between 500 and 800 hours every single year of continuing training for my photography and for my businesses. So make sure you have somebody who really knows what they're doing and they are uh, an industry leader or someone who is really doing well within the industry and not just the person down the street who said, I'm going to make a few bucks. So you get what you pay for as far as photographers go. But I'm also going to be talking about how you can do really nice looking photos without a professional if you cannot afford one. And again, I still recommend that you hire a professional because that's, you're going to get the best quality for that. And they're going to know what to do. They're going to make you look the prettiest. They're, they understand posing and lighting and, and posing is so important. Really, really it is. If you can trust a photographer to do this, if you can pay someone, please do. It's really important. But if you can't, or if you don't want to make that investment in your brand right now, I'm going to be talking to you about things that are really important throughout the next week. We're going to be doing some really cool live broadcasting, and I'm really excited about it because I love talking photography, and you guys don't know photography, so I get to really show you some cool stuff. It's kind of going to blow your mind. I'm excited. It's going to be great. So thank you so much for joining me. If you've loved this, you can jump on to www.readingtransforms.com. You'll have access to our online communities, our online courses, our resources, our tutorials, our articles, and the amazing projects that we're working on over at Reading Transforms. You can also jump into community.readingtransforms.com. That's my close Facebook group. I'm in there every single day teaching you how to avoid those pesky social media algorithms that keep bogging down your posts and keeping your fans from seeing what you're doing. And we're also talking about marketing your book, branding your author brand, engaging your fans, and really equipping them to get out there and market for you in a fun and creative way. I hope you'll join me. It's really awesome. We've got a great group of really supportive authors. I'm Cam Robinson, Cam Robinson Photography and Reading Transforms, and I will see you next time. Stay inspired.